we need to innovate and use AI responsibly. It's going to lead us forward in terms of the quality of care we deliver. And certainly, it's going to reshape the face of healthcare. But at the end, we still need to remember that whatever we do, we need to make it sustainable. Welcome to Healthcare Perspectives, a podcast by Siemens Healthineers about medical breakthroughs with the power to improve lives everywhere. You just heard Dr. Charles Goh, Chief Medical Informatics Officer at Singapore General Hospital. In this episode, host Vibhas Deshpande, Head of Sustainability Innovation and Research, Americas at Siemens Healthineers, is joined by our guests to explore the intersection of two forces shaping the future of healthcare artificial intelligence, and environmental sustainability. Hi, I'm Vipas Deshpande. Can artificial intelligence make healthcare more environmentally sustainable? It is a rich and timely question. What the question is really trying to get at is how can AI reduce the environmental footprint of healthcare delivery and whether and how AI can create more resource efficient, accessible, and circular healthcare systems. To explore these important topics, we have with us today Dr. Kate Hahnemann, a cardiac radiologist at the University of Toronto and chair of multiple global sustainability working groups. Also with us today are Dr. Charles Go, Chief Medical Informatics Officer at Singapore General Hospital, and Tobias Hyman, Head of the Department of Artificial Intelligence Germany at Siemens Health and Ears. Together, they're helping define what responsible AI really means and what steps healthcare leaders can take now to ensure that AI benefits patients, clinicians, and health systems, and preserve global resources. When we talk about sustainability, we often think of carbon emissions or climate change, but environmental sustainability means something much broader in healthcare. At its crux, it's really about how we can preserve resources, whether cost, energy, human capital, and reduce waste and pollution all while improving health outcomes for everyone, everywhere. Today, our experts in radiology and AI explore how the rise of artificial intelligence is reshaping the conversation around sustainability in healthcare. We will discuss how AI can drive smarter, faster, and more efficient care, while ensuring that its use supports long-term environmental and systemic sustainability. In healthcare, AI has the potential to improve clinical and operational efficiencies, but may require an enormous amount of resources to generate and operate. This means that responsible AI use is of utmost importance and thoughtful resource allocation must be a consideration in building and operating AI systems. For medical informatics officer Charles Goh in Singapore, it's about balancing the benefits of AI with its environmental impacts. The main way in which AI can help in terms of meeting energy efficiency standards and regulations is actually in improving uh, clinical decision-making and alignment to best practice. And AI is able to do this in a much better and more nuanced way than simple rule-based types of uh, clinical decision support. It can potentially be able to, to do it in a way that's much more tailored to the individual patient. For all the benefits that AI brings, there's definitely that energy utilization and water utilization and electronic waste from data centers. There are all these potentially negative effects on the environment from AI. Trying at the very least to be net neutral is is a good target. Not only is the value of AI in increasing efficiencies, but also in reducing waste and pollution. And waste can come in many forms, such as low value procedures, repeat exams, and even delayed diagnoses. Early diagnosis is critical in saving precious healthcare resources and cost and improve patient outcomes by addressing health problems before they become harder to manage. If you are able to avoid unnecessary procedures, if you are able to arrive at the correct diagnosis faster and implement the ideal best practice treatment, that's actually really how we can minimize waste in the healthcare system. Beyond clinical decision-making, the use of AI can be extended to making operations more efficient like improving scheduling exams and procedures before a patient even walks into a hospital. More optimally utilizing the resources we already have, that's something that AI promises. Radiology departments are complex places. There are many different scanners, you know, many different sites. 
you want to make sure that you use your machines optimally, that you keep them occupied, so you don't overbook or underbook. In Toronto, cardiac radiologist Kate Honeman sees firsthand that redundancy and inefficiency isn't just ineffectual, it's unsustainable. That's why it's so important to emphasize collaboration and shared frameworks to ensure that AI is developed and deployed wisely. We recognize that AI has tremendous potential in terms of improving our ability to deliver high quality care for patients within radiology and generally in healthcare, but we need to think about it from a responsibility perspective in terms of maximizing the benefits while minimizing the downstream or the upstream negative impacts, environmental or otherwise. And sustainability is more than a metric of emissions or kilowatts. It's also about how we invest our intellectual and clinical capital. I think it's important on the training side that we think about how can we work together? What I think we want to avoid is having 10 groups across the world working on training an AI model to automatically report coronary artery calcium. There's a lot of redundancy. So can we work together? Can we not store the same annotated image sets in multiple different locations? Data redundancy in this context is the duplication of the data across multiple locations, systems, or storage points. As my colleague Tobias Hyman, head of AI Germany explains, eliminating such redundancy is a top priority for his team. This is one of the reasons why we have our global Health Ineas AI Center as the central resource for AI applications to make sure that we leverage the expertise and the optimized processes for AI development with our team. Data redundancy would mean that we have the same data multiple times. So this we are preventing by our big data office who are basically curating our entire data lake and making sure that everything is nicely sorted and categorized for every application that we are training. It is generally agreed that training AI models requires large volumes of data. But how much data are we talking? Is there a need to grow data volumes indefinitely for every application? You really want your AI to be optimized to the use case. Right now, medical papers, they are always looking at how accurate is this? We run it 97, 98, 99%. But sometimes we need to consider what is good enough for a particular use case. And that can actually help us to be a lot more sustainable. Though reducing waste and energy usage with AI involves many complex solutions, Meaningful progress often begins with practical, everyday decisions rooted in common sense. This is like not leaving your lights on for the weekend if you're going away, leaving all the lights on in your house. Nobody would do that. So same principle applies in radiology, in AI and otherwise. So we don't want to be consuming electricity or other resources if we don't need to. From an AI perspective, this would be not purchasing an AI tool or not running it if you're not going to use the results of it. At Singapore General Hospital, AI is often used to shorten imaging exams and still maintain a high image quality. AI-driven reconstruction allows us to enhance the image to reduce noise. You can actually perform shorter imaging studies and still get just as good quality images. These methods actually help very much in improving efficiency for a radiology practice. But it's not just about creating a more efficient system for data collection. The energy source itself and the local infrastructure are also important factors to consider. The environmental impact of electricity use, of course, depends tremendously on where that's generated from. One of the things that has been a bit challenging because we can't influence it directly a lot of times is where's the source of the energy that we're going to use. And if we can use renewable energy sources, certainly that's going to have a huge impact on uh, the environmental sort of load of AI. In terms of the hardware that we use, a lot of times the older hardware and older infrastructure for data centers and for hospitals is, is less energy efficient. At Siemens Health and Ears' headquarters in Germany, Tobias Hyman is focused on an efficiently designed training process in order to cut back on energy usage. How is this energy generated? And does a renewable source of energy make how much energy you use unimportant? It is 100% renewable energy, yes, this is true. But even if it's renewable energy, we would like to minimize the amount we are using. 
So a large part depends on the efficiency also of your training process. So one thing we are doing is leveraging uh, so-called foundation models to speed up our trainings. So obviously you need some time to train these foundation models, but then this serves as a basis to really enable us to speed up the development of downstream applications significantly faster. So when we start off from a good foundation model, we get uh, 60 to 80% faster training times in comparison to starting from zero. AI, when used responsibly and with sustainability in mind, has the power to improve patient outcomes, reduce waste and resource use, and create a more efficient, equitable, and environmentally conscious healthcare system. As members of the RSNA Sustainability Task Force, both Kate Hahnemann and Charles Go advocate for a responsible use of technology. AI and sustainability, they are both rather hot topics at this point in time. But I would say that they, they differ quite significantly in some ways as well. AI adoption is being driven internally. A lot of people are using it because they, they see the efficiency gains, they see how it can help their workflow, they see how it's got strategic value for their organization. But sustainability, a lot of times the benefits that you reap in that sense are not directly to your workflow or to your efficiency. You're actually caring for the, the planet and therefore you're caring for everyone outside of the hospital as well. And you're caring not for the people of today, but you're actually caring for the people of tomorrow. For Tobias Hyman, reducing energy consumption and improving efficiency in radiology involves the use of new AI tools. The AI-based reconstruction technique for our MR machines enabled higher image quality even for our low-field scanners that is competitive with uh, standard 1.5 Tesla machines. You also need less measurements to reach the same image quality. So if you are using the AI-based reconstruction, that means you reach the same image quality faster, with less energy, or even at a lower field strength. We really want to develop purpose-driven digital and AI solutions across the different levels, which means there should be an inherent value that we can deliver with this technology to our customers, right? We want to really increase the efficiency so that the resources are used better. And AI can help us to do that. Designing and using an AI system for efficiency gains is one thing, but operationalizing it in a real-world clinical environment is a whole different challenge. In Toronto, Kate Hahnemann has learned that resource preservation and operational efficiency can be amplified by a great team. I co-lead our local sustainability group with a technologist partner who is also part of the leadership team. And that has been really, truly transformative in terms of both understanding the landscape of what players need to be involved, all the stakeholders that need to be part of it, and actually implementing the changes that we come up with. One tip is to, to put a team together, to have a team within your departments. And I think these probably do need multiple layers. So, you know, within your local radiology group, ideally you want to have a team who's really engaged, at least one technologist, partner, radiologist, a physicist would be super helpful, medical engineering. And at Singapore General Hospital, Charles Goh has found that prioritizing impact is key. You obviously want to start with things that have high impact and use lower and less resources in terms of the cost of implementation, the cost of development and all that. And I think some of the operational tasks are really great ideal use cases to start with. Triage, scheduling, automating mundane sort of administrative tasks. In the end, one of AI's greatest strengths is to free clinicians to do what humans can do best, connect, interpret, and care. In an ideal world, AI would allow us as radiologists, as technologists or radiographers, or anyone else kind of along our value chain to focus on the tasks that require human input, highly skilled tasks, the interpretation, for example, many of the things that bring us joy, the reason we chose to, to go into medical imaging, and taking away those time-consuming tasks that are repetitive and can be automated or replaced by AI. When used responsibly, AI's impact can range from increased staff efficiency to a much improved patient and staff experience and a smarter use of resources that reduces pollution and waste. From a workforce perspective, it's important to acknowledge burnout. We have higher patient volumes. Being more efficient will hopefully improve 
wellness, well-being, mental health. I do think AI will help us in that regard if we are using AI tools and deploying them that allow us to be more efficient. And on the patient perspective, if we can use AI to benefit patients, I think we will have earlier diagnosis. We will have better risk prediction in terms of understanding high-risk patients who might benefit from more invasive therapies. Professor Tan Hyang Kun, he just took over as a CEO of SGH in January. I really like his New Year address. He had three principles that he said our hospital should adhere to. And he said the first is people first. And by people, he meant our staff, but also our patients. Innovate forward and sustainable always. The second two principles, they reflect what we're talking about today. We need to innovate and use AI responsibly. It's going to lead us forward in terms of the quality of care we deliver. And certainly, it's going to reshape the face of healthcare. But at the end, we still need to remember that whatever we do, we need to make it sustainable. It's a responsibility of, of the governance of the hospital to drive that ground up, but also from the, the top down. I, I think all of us are responsible for it. Looking ahead, the future of artificial intelligence in medicine holds great promise for advancing both human health and planetary well-being. It is our purposeful stewardship of resources and commitment to sustainable practices that will determine whether the promise will be realized. This is the most important issue of our time. I think it will define our generation. I have yet two young children. I think it will certainly define their generation. I care deeply about imaging and cardiac imaging and patients' health. I love being a radiologist, but if we do not have a healthy planet, we do not have healthy patients and we are not gonna be healthy. But I'm definitely a passionate person in general, but I, I truly care very deeply about it. And I, I fundamentally believe that this is the most important thing. I think you can think about this as a problem. We use a lot of energy in radiology. We use a lot of energy in AI. I think the optimist in me views this as an opportunity that we can have such a huge positive impact as radiologists and within the entire medical imaging industry. I think we have such an important opportunity here to improve sustainability and to do things better. You have been listening to Healthcare Perspectives, a podcast by Siemens Healthineers. We pioneer breakthroughs in healthcare for everyone, everywhere, sustainably. Subscribe to us and always get the latest episode in your podcast feed. Or visit Siemens-Healthineers.com slash podcast for more. The intro and ending segment of this episode contain AI-generated audio. The opinions expressed by the guests and contributors in this podcast are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of Siemens Health and Ears. The statements by Siemens Health and Ears customers in this podcast are based on results that were achieved in the customer's unique setting. Because there is no typical hospital or laboratory and many variables exist, e.g. hospital size, samples mix, case mix, level of IT and or automation adoption, there can be no guarantee that other customers will achieve the same results. This podcast describes possible future ideas and concepts. It is not intended to describe specific performance and or safety characteristics of currently planned or future products. Future realization and availability cannot be guaranteed.